Hello, welcome back. My name is Jennifer and in this video I'm going to show you how I turn this lamp into a beautiful Rivendell inspired chandelier. The majority of the materials I'm going to use for this chandelier is going to be natural sources that you can find on the trail in the woods like for example these twigs and branches that have these kind of curves to them and maybe some of these kind of fluffy grass strands and leaves or dried up plants that you can find in the woods that matches the aesthetic of something that look very magical maybe something elvish and ethereal whimsical maybe a little bit Wiccan, witchy, that kind of look. Whatever suits your style. So before I start painting, I'm going to mask off the areas that I don't want any paint. I'm also removing all of these acrylic prisms that came with the set of this lamp or this chandelier because I don't want them to get any chalk paint on them either because during the process before I started painting I was a little bit unsure if I was going to reuse the prisms on the chandelier once I had decorated it and all of that or if I'm going to scrap that and remove them entirely and not include them in the finished result. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to give my ceiling lamp or my tiny chandelier a completely new paint job. And I want to have this kind of rustic effect that makes it look like it's antique, vintage and starting to rust. And I also want this deeper tone to the chandelier so it matches all of the branches so it all blends in together and looks like they're one complete piece. First color I'm going to use is this black shock paint and I'm going to dilute it a little bit with water because I want a little bit of a transparency to this color so I have variations in tone and also enhance the vintage antique look to the chandelier. At first I was thinking that I was going to need to do two layers of the black shock paint but it turns out that once I had applied one layer of shock paint it actually had these kind of cool textures and effects already to the paint and you can see the original paint job peeking through underneath to give this kind of brassy effect to the paint. I also applied the paint with a stippling motion using my brush so it would give all of these patterns in it that looks like textures instead of having an even application. And this would also enhance details once I go over with some dry brushing techniques which it will enhance all of these textures and details. Once the black chalk paint had dried I'm using another chalk paint in a warm chocolate tone and this is just to enhance those warmer tones that matches the branches and nature but also it's going to have a layering effect when I'm going to create the rust effect to the metal. And I'm doing the same technique using the stippling motion but I have more of a dry brush technique meaning I have less paint on the brush and it's also not a watery paint. I just want to be able to slowly build up if I want to add more colors in some areas and so on and so forth. I'm going to mix in a little bit of burnt umber, yellow ochre and a little bit of crimson red to get this rusty orangey tone that has a little bit of a brown hue to it. I knew that I don't have a shock paint at home that has these orangey reddish tones so I'm actually going to make a custom mix using acrylics because they dry in a satin matte finish, just like the shock paint. This one I'm doing a lot of dry brushing, meaning as little paint as possible, just so I can really build up to the amount of rust that I want. And I applied the rust effect to the entire chandelier, but I've mainly focused on adding a more intense look in the areas that would be more exposed to the elements, meaning the tips of the petals and some of the bevels, and I also used the rust effect to enhance the highlights of the details around the chandelier. I actually felt at first that maybe I should stop it here, but then I was looking at some pictures of these rustic antique old looking chandeliers. Those chandeliers that also had this rustic effect had some hints of gold to them. So I wanted to add a little bit of gold to the effect just to bring back some of those metallic elements and also make it look like it has sort of a royal look 
to it. And like before, I'm going to do a dry brush technique and I have as little golden wax as possible on my brush. And I'm using a very damaged bristle brush. I'm mainly focusing on the highlights of the chandelier, but I'm also dabbing it or stippling the golden wax in areas that I just want to add a little bit something extra if I felt like some areas were missing something. And this really made all those warm tones come together and also thinking about the tones that are in the branches and all of the other decorations that I'm going to use. This is going to make all of those colors really come together and feel like they are one complete set. For the decorations of the chandelier, the majority is going to be natural sources that I've found outside in nature and all that. But I also have a couple of leaves that are more artificial. And I have these petal leaves that I have sprayed before to give it more of that antique look to it so it isn't bright green. First you can see that I'm actually using a little bit of aluminum wire just to keep the branch in place so it won't move around when I'm going to attach it on other parts. Since they have a metal wire in them, which was perfect, then I could bend them to the shape that would actually match the flow of the chandelier. And I'm going to attach the branch using a black thread and just wrap it around and then add a double knot, which is going to keep it in place. And I'm doing this in like two or three areas of the branch, just so I know that it stays in place and won't move around. Next I'm going to use these branches that I had found in the woods that has sort of this kind of bent shape to them. Meaning that if I attach them with the bent side facing up so it would enhance the shape and the flow of the ceiling lamp even more. And I'm first going to apply three of these. This time I'm actually using some cable ties because that would make it much easier for me to know that the branches will stay in place and not just move around or twist or just change the position or anything like that. So I'm just using the cable ties to really lock these three branches in place. Once I'm happy with all that I'm going to trim down the cable ties so the plastic piece that is sticking out won't actually be noticeable anymore. And that's it for all the details that I'm going to permanently attach to the chandelier. Because in the next step I'm going to pretty much just stick in some of the branches and twigs that I have in areas that they can actually get locked into. Tiny holes or tiny crevices or nooks and crannies that then will actually make the branches slide into and stay in place. This part is pretty much me just playing around with what details looks best. So I first started at the top of the lamp or the chandelier using some grass strands and some tinier twigs and branches that had some of these uh, warm tone tiny leaves and petals on them. And then on the lower part of the chandelier I focused on more of these branches that had a lot of tiny twigs to them to get this kind of overgrown effect has a ethereal, magical look to it. Once that was done, I was actually just starting to focus on filling in the empty areas in the center piece of the chandelier, because now it looked like it was a combination of being bottom heavy and top heavy, but nothing in the middle. So at that part, I just added some of these more fuller, tinier branches and twigs, a lot of leaves, some of these dried up plants that had all of these tiny petals to them, just to have something that would actually fill in all of those empty the areas so it would get more of a nicer even fullness to the chandelier so it would have an even nice flow to the entire shape. 
I also had some of these artificial plants or leaves that were sprayed with a lot of gold and glitter to them. But if I wanted to include those, it would take away this kind of look that nature was becoming one with this chandelier. So I decided to scrap that idea. And just to add more of that magical look to it, I added just a couple of acrylic prisms that were in like a crystal shape and some were in this teardrop shape that made it look like it was like water driplets that had been crystallized and when they were hanging in the chandelier they would actually reflect the light to give it more of this magical look to it. So at first I was like, yeah, it should be good like this. I, I think I shouldn't add anything more. But then when I was looking at it and was thinking about it, that there is something missing here. There is one more detail that I want to add to really capture this magical effect. And I remember that I had this tiny fairy lights with a battery pack. So what I decided to do was just place the battery pack up in the top of the center of the chandelier and then I started to, with each strand of these metal wires that had these LED lights, I decided to randomly place them around the chandelier so, so I would have these kind of even glowing tiny lights inside of the chandelier to make it look like maybe there are some fairies living in the chandelier or just having this kind of magical glow from within. Since these LED lights actually have a timer function, I can make sure that they light up when it's dark outside to give it more of this warmer, cozy feeling during those cold autumn winter nights. And that's it! This is the final result of the Rivendell Elvish magical inspired chandelier. It was very easy to create. It was all about just letting the paint dry in between. And when the paint finish was completely dry, it was all about just decorating the entire piece with all of these branches and twigs and leaves and other decorative parts that would match and enhance the aesthetics that I was going for. And I know that the actual process of how I made the rustic effect, I pretty much went through that process pretty quickly in this video. But I'm actually planning to make a video that will go into more fuller detail on how to create an antique rusty effect to whatever material or whatever object you are creating this on. So I hope you really enjoyed the process of me giving this ceiling lamp in my hallway a new finish, making it look like an enchanting, magical, ethereal chandelier. That could be part of the Rivendell interior or some kind of elven kingdom. Just something magical or fairy-like. Something that could be in a magical woodland. Whatever you could imagine that this chandelier would fit the best. So that's it for this video and I will see you in the next one. Which is coming pretty soon.